What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to find limits of composite functions. So we're going to go through these four examples here, and here's the theorem we're going to use. And the way this theorem works is anytime we have a composition of functions here, if the limit of the inside function g of x exists and is equal to some value l, and the outside function f is continuous at l, then this just basically tells us here that we could take the limit of the inside function and plug that into the outside function. So let's get started. For the first example and for all limits, one of the first things you want to try is just plugging in the x value. So notice it's the limit as x approaches 3. So if we were to just plug in 3, we would have 3 squared minus 9 over 3 minus 3 on the inside, which would give us 0 over 0. So cosine of 0 over 0 is undefined, which means we have a little bit more work to do. But if we think about it, if we just target the inside function, the inside function is the x squared minus 9 piece, and we take the limit as x approaches 3 of just the inside function x squared minus 9 over x minus 3, when we evaluate this limit, we're going to see that this satisfies the conditions of the theorem. So we have the limit as x approaches 3 of, on top we could factor this as x plus 3 times x minus 3, and on bottom we have x minus 3. So these matching factors cancel out. And now to simplify this limit, just plug in for x. So we plug in x equals 3, and we have 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. So now think about what we just found here. The value of L, our limit, is equal to 6. And the outside function cosine is definitely continuous at 6 because cosine is continuous for all values x. It's just a uh, terrible job drawing here, but it's just going to complete this wave over and over for all values x. So the conditions are met here. So what this tells us is that this limit, we could say, is equal to cosine of the limit as x approaches 3 and we've got x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. But this inside limit we just evaluated and it was equal to 6. So our final answer here is just going to be cosine of 6. So for the second example here, we could start this the same way, but when we plug in x equals 0, we're going to have natural log of 0 over 0, which is undefined. So what we should try here is taking the limit as x approaches 0 of just the inside function. So we're going to target, we have the limit as x approaches 0, and we have 3 sine x over x. And this is a famous limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. So this is going to work out to 3 times 1, which is just equal to 3. So now if we think about the natural log function, natural log on its own is continuous for all values of x greater than 0. So the limit, which is 3 here, is definitely a location on natural log where natural log is continuous. So the theorem is satisfied here. So this tells us our limit. We could write as natural log the limit as x approaches 0. And then we have 3 sine x over x. So to simplify this here, now we just remember our limit was equal to 3. So our final answer here is just going to be natural log 3. For the third example, we're dealing with the square root function. And just a quick mental check. If we were to plug in 4, notice we have 4 minus 4 is 0 in the denominator which is undefined, so this tells us we have a little bit more work to do. But once again, the trick with this theorem is to target the inside function. So inside the square root, we have that rational expression, x to the third minus 2x squared minus 8x over x minus 4. But one thing I'll do just ahead of time is I'm going to factor out an x, and we'll have x times, we have x squared minus 2x minus 8. And this is going to factor even further. We could break this down a little bit more. So we're going to have x times, and then on top we'll have x minus 4 times x plus 2. So once we break down that quadratic, notice we have matching factors of x minus 4. So now we could just plug 4 in for all the remaining x's, and we're going to have 4 in the numerator times, and we have 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. So this is going to give us 24. So now to apply the theorem here, this is equal to the square root of, and we have the limit as x approaches 4 of that rational expression, which is we have x to the third minus 2x squared minus 8x over x minus 4. But notice we already evaluated the limit of the inside function, and it was equal to 24. So our solution here is just going to be the square root of 24. And this could simplify a little bit more. We could write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And now this is just going to be 2 square root 6. Okay, for the last example here, we have another composite function here. So what we're going to target first is the limit as x approaches 0 of the inside function, which on the inside we have x over, 
and we've got the square root of 16x plus 1, and then we have a minus 1 on the outside. So to simplify this limit, we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, and the conjugate would be square root 16x plus 1, and then outside the square root we have a plus 1. And we're going to multiply the same thing on top. We've got 16x plus 1, and we've got a plus 1 on the outside. So now to work this out, the bottom we're going to use this algebra. We're going to use the idea that anytime you multiply a binomial by its conjugate, it's simply a difference of two squares. It's the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. So the first thing that we're squaring is the square root 16x plus 1. And when we square that, that's just going to be, and we're writing this on bottom, that's just going to be 16x plus 1. So this is kind of like our a squared term. And then we have minus b squared would be the next thing squared. So the b term here is 1, and when we square 1, we're just going to get another 1. And on top, we're going to leave this in factored form. So we have x times that binomial square root 16x plus 1 with that extra plus 1. So here, notice 1 minus 1 cancels, and we don't need this anymore, so we'll get this out of the way. So we could simplify this a little bit, and in the next line, we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0, and we've got x times square root 16x plus 1, and then we got the plus 1 outside the square root over just 16x. But notice the x over x's could now cancel, and now we could plug in 0. And when we plug in 0, we're going to have the square root of 16 times 0 plus 1 with the plus 1 on the outside over 16. So now this just gives us the square root of 1 plus 1, which is going to give us 1 plus 1 is 2 over 16, which reduces to 1 eighth. So now to apply the theorem here and close this out, this is going to be equal to the cube root of, and we have the limit as x approaches 0 of this term here on the inside was x over radical 16x plus 1 with the minus 1 on the outside. So once again, because we were able to find an exact limit here of 1 eighth and the cube root function is continuous at 1 eighth, this tells us we could evaluate this limit now by direct substitution. We're going to substitute in the 1 eighth. So once again, we evaluated this limit. It was 1 eighth. And now we have the cube root of 1 eighth, which is just equal to 1 half. Okay, well, this is going to wrap up this video on limits of composite functions. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.